Luke chapter number two, beginning at verse number nine. Verse number nine. Ah. Verse number nine. And it reads like this. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. Verse number 14. Verse number 14. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those with whom he is well pleased. And, and the NIV version also says, and goodwill towards all men. I want to talk to us with, from the topic, the true Christmas spirit. The true Christmas spirit. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. This morning, this pastor's going to talk about the true Christmas spirit. Ah, uh, good morning, everybody. We are in what in Christian churches we call the Advent season. And the Advent season just really means the arrival or the coming. It, it, it's to point you and me to the original of Jesus Christ to redeem us. But it also points down the road to his second coming when he comes to actually take us off earth and take us back to glory with him. So it's the, it's the, it's the true meaning of Christmas. So let me ask you this by a show of hands. Are you in the Christmas spirit? Anybody in the Christmas spirit? Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand if you're not, because sometimes you get there early. Sometimes it could be September and you're ready for Christmas. Yeah. And then sometimes it could be Christmas Eve and you still ain't ready for Christmas. Ah. You, you're just in a mode or in a mood and you just feel like, mm, not so much. But what does it mean when you say you're in the Christmas spirit? Because different people have different meanings about that. Uh, I was watching the news. They, it was on a morning show, and this lady had these products out there, and she had stuff like crock pots and slippers to keep your feet warm, and she was telling the, the people on the show, now, we have some products here this morning that will help everybody get into the Christmas spirit, and I'm sitting here as a pastor, I lean forward, and I'm going like, oh, well, let me see how this crock pot gets you in the Christmas spirit. And she talked about all the gadgets and all the stuff you can make and all the desserts. You can, I didn't know you could make d desserts in crock pots. And she talked about roast beef and stuff and all the things you can make. Then she said, and then these shoes right here. Oh, if you put them on, they have wool and they just make you feel so warm and cozy in the house and all safe and everything. Just all to get you in the Christmas spirit. And I started looking. I said, well, maybe I need to order some of that. <laughs> have you ever felt that way? Or people are smiling and laughing and going around, and you got some tough stuff happening in your life. And you're saying, I don't feel like that right now. Let me help understand what it means to get in the Christmas spirit, because the world gives us a picture of what it believes the Christmas spirit is. The world has done, it's got excited about the baby Christmas. And they kicked the baby out, though, and they put in what they believe is the Christmas spirit. Do you understand? You know what I'm talking about, Rosemary. You, you got me. You got me. She's nodding. Yes, yes, I understand. I got you. I got you. Let me give you four things Christmas ain't. First thing that Christmas ain't is not just happiness and smiling and being together and generosity. Because you can do that on a Thursday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but, uh, because you and I watch these Hallmark movies and they're so mushy, and they're like, they always start off bad. Dad's locked up in prison. The girls that left the house, and they're out on the street running around acting crazy. And mom is drinking. But by the end of the movie, mom stopped drinking. Dad's out to jail, and the girls are back home. And then they sing, oh, come, all ye faithful. But ain't nothing really changed. It's just it's the end of the movie, so they got to make it end nice to make you feel good. That's one thing that Christmas ain't, but the world tries to paint it as that. It's about the baby Jesus who came to redeem us of our sins. The other thing that Christmas ain't, Christmas ain't what Wall Street like it to be. Wall Street tells you to go buy stuff. Wall Street wants money, money, money. Wall Street is caught up in capitalism. It's caught up in the American dream of buy stuff and get stuff. Stuff. And so when you and I feel down and out, it's because we look at everybody else that have stuff 
And we think if I just had more stuff, I would be happy. Brother Charlie, it ain't about the stuff, man, because you can have stuff and still not be happy. Somebody ought to hear me to say. Or, 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 or you can have stuff and you're glad when you get it. You know, you, you're glad when you get it. And, and you, you want to show off the new car. You want to show off the new house. You want to show off the new baby. But in about 30 days, that's old. And everybody done seen the car. Everybody done walked through your house. Everybody done seen the baby. He or she's cute. Move on. So stuff ain't what it is. That's, what, that's another thing Christmas ain't. Thirdly, thirdly, the third thing that Christmas ain't, we, we find out it's not just feeling good. It's not just stuff. The other thing that Christmas ain't, it's, it's, it's not just uh, um, alcohol. Everybody give alcohol for Christmas, I've noticed. I didn't know that, Reverend, but uh, at the hospital when I used to be there, they used to give bottles. Isaiah and Jeremiah, it's good to see y'all this morning, man. Good to see you, young brothers. I heard you over there drumming, and I started to take over. You missed the beat one time, but that's all I decided to leave it out. I didn't want to bring it up in church, so I'll talk to you about it later. But uh, I'm just messing with you, man. I just mess with just nothing but love, nothing but love. Actually, it was Isaiah that messed And so what was... It's not, it's not the chemical stuff that we use. I learned a long time ago, we drink and use drugs or sex because we're either trying to remember or forget. That ain't Christmas. That ain't Christmas. That ain't Christmas. But what it is. So the world has tried to tell us what Christmas is. But that's not it. Those are all man-generated expressions of Christmas. Man says Christmas is just for the kids. That's the fourth thing Christmas ain't. It ain't just for the kids. The world decided that Christmas is for children to get a bunch of gifts. That ain't why we have Christmas. We have Christmas because we had sin. We have Christmas because there was a mess up in the Garden of Eden. And God promised back then, I'm going to send you a redeemer in history coming. And he's going to come to take back the mess up that y'all did in the garden. And so that's why we got Christmas. Christmas is to redeem us, save us, to express God's love for us. It's to fulfill the promise he made for us. That's why we got Christmas. Yes, get the kids some gifts. Yes, get them some presents. But the real reason is not that the kids might get gifts. is that we make the gift of Christ. As a background information of this portion of why are we here in Luke? Because Christmas is a time of spiritual reflection, spiritual reflection, and it gives us the important foundations of the Christian faith. We couldn't even call ourselves Christians. We couldn't even have Skybridge Community Church if it wasn't for Christmas. Christ had to come. This is Jesus Christ's church. Pastor, I just get to pastor it. This ain't my church. It belongs to Jesus. This ain't your church. We just put the name Skybridge on it because we worship in this area, this atmosphere. But this ain't our church. This is God's church. It's his doing that started back when he sent the child 2,000 years ago. When we celebrate God's love for the world through the birth of Christ, then we're expressing Christmas. Come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. The Bible tells the story of birth hundreds of years before it happened. And then we celebrate the birth hundreds of years after it happened. It's about Jesus. Christmas is about God sent his only son to atone for sin. Because we really messed up, y'all, so that we would not be separated any longer from God. All have sinned and become short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Tell your neighbor, all. All have sinned. So don't look at nobody sideways and think, I wish she was here to hear this sermon. Oh, I wish he was there. No, you need to be here too. Let me tell you something else that we're supposed to do after church. Did y'all know that after church, we don't just go to the place to eat? After church, the reason I ask you to take notes is so you can go back and share your notes with somebody who don't know what you know. Yeah. Somebody said they going like, well, you know, all these cars, you tell us to fill out these little blue, these pink things every Sunday and, and write down the bullet points. They're not just for your benefit. It's in the whole thing. You are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. You are supposed to go tell about the Christ child. You were supposed to be like the, like the shepherds who went to tell everybody else, come see. Come see. 
But if you only take notes, stick it in your pocket or your purse, and you don't ever say anything about what we talked about, you are missing what you're supposed to be doing. My job is to equip you. You are supposed to go. I can't be in your neighborhood. I can't go to that H-E-B. I can't go to that dry cleaners. I can't go to your children's school, but you can. Somebody better go tell them about Jesus. You want to know why there's hell on earth? You want to know why the politicians are crazy? You want to know why people are talking about what your kids can and can't read in school? Because they won't talk. The church is too quiet. The black church and the white church, the Latino church and the, his, and the Lat, uh, Asian church, we're too quiet. Somebody needs to do something. I can't believe it's still going. I can't believe what the, what the Republicans and the Democrats just did. Oh, they do what they do because they don't know Jesus. And if they know Jesus, they don't act like they do. You may need to nudge somebody. The next person you may talk to may be somebody that you influence to go back and make some changes. You better go and tell somebody. These are all man-generated secular beliefs. We inherited a sinful nature, and we needed somebody to come and change our nature. Still being fully God and yet fully man, Jesus came into the world to save all. And when I say all, I mean all. I think in America, and I hope this plays as we stream it somewhere else and they pick this up, God didn't just come to save people in the United States of America. He didn't just come to save white churches or black churches or Latino or Asian. He came to save everybody. When he says he came to save all, I mean all. These people in South Africa and Somalia and Egypt and Israel and Saudi Arabia and Iraq and Bolivia and England and Spain and Canada and Mexico. All. And if they don't look like you, I'm sorry if you feel bad about that, but he came to say all. So let me tell you what Christmas is, since we know what it ain't. The gospel helps us to see the true meaning of Christmas, the true spirit of Christmas. And the first thing you need to understand about the true spirit of Christmas is the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Everybody say faith. faith. It's the spirit of faith. You can't have Christmas without faith. And I don't mean this faith right here. Hi, faith. Wave your hand, faith. How you doing? All right. God bless you. It's the spirit of faith. Can you imagine, if you go back and look at Luke chapter 1, beginning around verse 18, it's a faith move. Christmas is a faith move. By faith, God changes things. By faith, he moves in our lives. When we uh, uh, make faith moves, we do it all the time. We just don't think about it. We just don't think about it. I want to be in the high school band, or I want to be on the sports team. It's a faith move. So you go out and you get involved. You enroll or you tell your mom and dad, mom, dad, I want to be on the, on the team. It's a faith move. You don't know if they're going to let you in. You got to try out for the band or you have to try out for the sports team, but you decide to go anyway. It's a faith move. As children, we don't know that we're making faith moves. We're just thinking we made a decision. But we're making a move to trust that the coach will let you on, to trust that the band director will like the way you play or see a, a, a potential in you. By faith, we pray to marry our spouse. And we don't know if he or she is going to be with us. And we pray that the marriage works. It's a faith move. And every day that we marry, it's a faith move. Amen? You know, we always pray for each other, getting tired and getting on each other's nerves. But by faith, we stay together. Somebody say amen. amen. By faith. By faith, we go into the military. And we travel to the other side of the planet. I didn't know that if I get into the Air Force or Navy or Marines or, or, or Army that this is going to happen. But by faith, we make a move, and then we find out some people never get transferred away. And other people travel all around the world. But it's a faith move. You don't know what the military is going to do with you. It's a faith move. But you trust man. If you trust man, why don't you trust God? Notice how faith is involved in the first Christmas. If you go back to Luke chapter 1, by faith, Zacharias. The father of John. Who's John? John the Baptist was Jesus' first cousin. And so by faith, God tells Zacharias, hey, dude, I know you and your wife are both old. You are up in age, past childbearing years. But by faith, the angel came to tell Zacharias, y'all are going to have a child. Zacharias essentially laughed. <laughs> dude, dude, I can't, you know, we can't do that no more. I, we ain't having no children. So God let him be mute where he couldn't talk until John was born. Can you imagine? 
For nine months, he's got to listen to his wife talking. He can't say nothing back to her until the baby's born. And if she come up there and say something, he just look at her like, By faith, God had to discipline him, discipline him because he didn't believe the message that he would be a father of John the Baptist. God was trying to tell him, dude, I can do anything. I can make old people have babies if I want to because I'm God. Yeah. By faith, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was visited by an angel and told that she would be the mother of God's son. And by faith, she believed that she, he, he, he had to first tell her in, in verse 30, chapter 1, he said, don't be afraid, but I found, you found favor with God. It don't mean she was perfect or she's the only one he could use. It just means that she is the one that he decided to use. He said, by faith, Mary accepted that, that the angel came to her. By faith, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, Joseph encountered an angel. By faith, the angel had to come and let him know, Joseph, the woman you're about to marry, she's already pregnant. Joseph was like, say what? She's already pregnant. What? And I want you to marry her anyhow because it's the Holy Spirit that overshadowed her and she's carrying the Christ child and you're going to be the adopted father on earth that takes care of this boy, my boy, by faith. By faith, Simeon awaited Jesus' arrival. Who was Simeon? Simeon was an old man that waited, and another woman named Elizabeth. They waited in the temple, believing that God's word was going to come true. And they waited and waited and waited and waited for years in the temple. And God promised Simeon, you will not die until you see the Christ child. Born. Ah! By faith, Simeon believed it. And then it happened. And he says, I have seen God in the flesh in so many words I'm paraphrasing that's in Luke chapter 2 and 3 but that requires some faith y'all to keep hanging out in church and doing God's work in the church until the Christ child arrives by faith the wise men men from the east men from Iraq traveled to Israel to see the Christ child isn't that interesting they were not Jews they were Gentiles how would that work today Iraqis going over to Israel today. It's a mess. But they believed the words that they heard about the Christ child, the promised child in Matthew chapter 2. By faith, shepherds tending sheep at night in the dark suddenly encounter angels that lit up the whole area. The scripture that we read a moment ago says, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. In other words, it became like bright, like daylight all of a sudden where it's supposed to be dark. And by faith, they believed and ran into the town to tell other people about this. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is the spirit of Christmas. It's a spirit of faith. Y'all, we're in this building today because of faith. You keep believing, and rightly so, that God loves you, redeemed you, saved you, called you, got you involved in ministry, got you a church home that loves you and calls you and checks on you and is involved in your life by faith. First, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says this, but having the same spirit of faith, according to that which is written, I believed, and therefore I speak. We also believe, and therefore we speak. What he's talking about is because of the faith that I have, I can't help myself. And now I got to tell other people about Jesus. Do you got the can't help it? Have you ever told anybody else, come see? Come see. Uh, or you try to tell people about your faith, Tish, and they say, oh, girl, ain't nobody going to come and fix your house up. You say, I got the city fixing my house up. And they paying for it by faith. I'm just saying, do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? God is able. God is able. Don't tell me what my guy can do. God got me a new house and made somebody else pay for it. I paid my taxes, now that taxes going to pay me back. By faith. This is a confidence move. This is a move that says, I don't know how we're going to get out of this predicament. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you don't? You done checked everything, where well, you done checked everything, and, and you looked at all your possibilities, and you done run out of ideas. 
I done called my friends. I done called the pastor. There's no way I can get out of this predicament but God. Does anybody have a but God in your life? There ought to be a but God in your life. I don't know how I'm going to keep my mind and raise these kids at the same time. But God. But God. Secondly, the true spirit of Christmas is the spirit of joy. Look at verse number nine. Verse number nine says this. And the angel said unto them. First of all, every time an angel shows up in the Bible, he usually says this. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Why does he do that? Because when you're walking around with your basket on aisle eight at H-E-B, and all of a sudden there's a bright angel hovering in aisle eight, and you're sitting there like, does anybody else see this? And the angel says, fear not, because there's a cell on aisle nine. No, he doesn't say that. He, he says, fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Everybody say great joy. Listen, there are times when you need great joy in your life. I don't mean great happiness. I mean great joy. A feeling that exceeds your feelings. God intended to Christmas to be a time of joy. And if anybody should have the spirit of joy at Christmas, it should be you and me. Because we are the beneficiaries of God's joy. I think one of the reasons people stay away from church and stay away from God is there's too much lack of joy. And you don't see God moving in your life. You don't see God moving in your life until you get everything you want. Well, God ain't going to give you everything you want. Because you ain't done nothing with what he gave you already. Sometimes just your needs are being met and you ain't happy about that. Listen, how many people are on a ventilator in here right now? Nobody. You are God right there. Thank you, God. Let me say this. Even as a pastor, uh, Brother Sean, even as a pastor, as a preacher, I appreciated God a whole lot more after I got out of the hospital a few weeks ago. There's some things I take for granted, Brother Mike. It ain't funny. I, I take some things for granted. And then when I found myself bleeding in the hospital, and they have to go in and do a special sinus surgery on me, and then I come out, and the doctor says, now you can't even blow your nose. And every time I grab a tissue, Linda goes like, what you doing? I'm like, I, I can't blow my nose. Nate, I couldn't blow my nose. I'm a grown man. I know when I need to blow my nose. I couldn't blow my nose because it would start the bleeding again, and they're going to rush me back to the hospital. And so every moment that I could not blow my nose, I'm praising God. I said, Lord, thank you that you sent me health care that I even got it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm flustered right now because I got to go through the rehab and get better. You know, the surgery went fine because I was asleep. But now I'm awake and I got pain. My face is throbbing. My head is throbbing. I can't get up without getting dizzy. And I'm going, like, what's going on? But a few weeks later, I'm back to normal again. Yeah. I tell that story because last night I blew my nose and I thought about it. I'm like, wow, I can blow my nose. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had joy. I'm talking about simple stuff. Can you walk? Thank God. Can you talk? Thank God. Can you see? Thank God. In your right mind? Thank God. Oh! When I look back over my life and I think things over, I know things could have been worse, but look at God move. I may not be where I want to be, but I ain't where I used to be. Somebody ought to hear me. You ought to high five two people. Two people say, God is able. Tell them, God is able! God is able, God is able. God is able, God is able, God is able. Ah! Because of his supernatural move in our lives. Sometimes it's a natural move, but other times it's supernatural move. We know that we're children of God. That gives us joy. And no one can snatch us away from him, according to John 10. We know that we are heirs of the inheritance that he has set up for us that's imperishable, 1 Peter chapter 1. We know that the author and finisher of our faith is the Lord Jesus Christ who came to get us. John Piper describes joy like this. He says, joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Jesus in the word and in his work. In other words, don't, not only do we see it written, but we see it written on our hearts and we see it written in our lives when he moves on us. Joy is that special emo emo emotion that only comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We should have joy remembering that Jesus is our Savior. We should have joy practicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should have joy 
sharing the gospel with somebody else who does not know him. We should have joy knowing that one day we will be with him in eternity and nobody can take that away from us. The joy of the Lord is the gladness of our heart that comes from knowing God, abiding in Christ, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's one of the true, true uh, Christmas spirit. We see the joy of Christmas spirit is, thirdly, is the spirit of peace. Everybody say peace. peace. Where do you find that, Pastor? In verse 14. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. Everybody say peace again. Listen, y'all, sometimes you just want peace. I, I, I don't have to have a whole bunch of stuff. I just want to be able to go down, lay down on my head, or watch the football game in I used to, I couldn't understand. Mom, you might be watching us live. I don't know, but I couldn't understand why. When we were little kids, it was four of us running around. And, and, and K on Mama would close the screen door. You know, one of those loud screen doors that had that thing. When you open it, it opens it goes, and when you let it go, it goes, pa! And then we'd come back here for water, pa! And then one day she just locked it, Willie. I'm just sitting there like, chicka, 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 chicka. I know she's in there. I can, I can see her moving around. Chicka, 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 chicka. She said, all right, y'all stay outside. Well, I want some water, water hose. Anybody had a water hose? You don't, you don't know nothing about that, but quit, quit, stop, stop, stop. Benita, quit playing back there, Benita. You don't know nothing about no water hose. You let it run till what, till what? Till all the hot water run out. Then you're sitting there, and then somebody snatched the hose from you while you're still drinking. You don't hear me, because why did mama lock the door? She needed peace. One more person, open that screen door. I, I didn't understand until we had kids. And then I said, oh, snap, lock the door. Lock the door. Now, don't y'all tell everybody. They're going to call CPS on me back and come back and get me for stuff I used to do. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. There is a, a unrest at every turn of our lives. We don't have peace in our spirit, peace in our heart. Because either we don't have Christ, or we have Christ, but we're not being obedient to Christ. Amen? Because, see, we can be redeemed and saved and blood-bought, but we're not living always, always, always according to his precepts and promises. Amen? We wish there was peace on earth. We wish that the politicians would start, stop fighting. We wish there was peace between Ukraine and Russia. We wish there was peace between uh, uh, Israel and Hamas and Palestine. We wish there was peace in our house. We wish there was peace in our family. We wish there was peace in our marriage. We wish there was peace in the church. But sin produces separation. And even though we know Christ, we still know how to sin. We know how to forgive each other, but we know how to give each other hell if we want to. And sometimes we choose to, even as believers, because today you caught me on a wrong day. I don't feel holy today. Amen. Forgive us, Father. Because of his sin, man is an enemy of God, and God has been an enemy of us. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. On earth, peace. He came as the prince of peace to give us peace because we were messed up and had no peace. The world is at war with each other. We're at war with ourselves, and we're at war with our maker because we want to do things our way. But Jesus came to make peace, and he did so. One, by bringing the sinner to a state of peace. In other words, that reconciliation. We could never have peace between, uh, between us and God, Brother Stevenson. We could never have peace except God comes and reconciles us. We couldn't reach him, so he had to come down and reach us. Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 6, For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against enemies, against evil rulers, against authorities in unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in high places. In other words, we fight not against each other, not really. We fight against evil spirits that mess with us and mess with our family members. You're trying to get straight and get right with your, love, with your loved ones, but somebody says something and makes you snap, and you go, like, oh, really? That's how it's going to be today. No, no. It's not her, it's not him, it's the evil people, uh, demons in our lives trying to speak into our lives. But God gives us a supernatural peace. You ever hear people say this? He'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. What does that really mean? Everybody is into this natural stuff now. Drink this, it's a natural herb. Eat this, it's a natural this. Well, you want something natural? The Holy Spirit is supernatural. 
How about that? Uh-huh, put that in your diet and eat it. He's supernatural. In other words, his peace defines, defies explanation. His peace is human, defies human logic. He gives you peace in the midst of a storm. It's like there's a hurricane going on in your life, but he puts you in the eye of the storm so nothing can bother you and move you. Amen? Amen. You still got hope. You still got joy. You still know that God is going to bring the sun up in the east and set it in the waste every day. Somebody say hallelujah right there. Thank you, Jesus. You still are in a situation you say, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out, but right now I got peace. You brought me through stuff in 87. You thought brought me through stuff in 92. You brought me in stuff in 2005. You brought me through, through 2020. Lord, I still trust in you. Ah. But secondly, the way we get peace is he gives us a new heart. Somebody say new heart. He gives us a new heart that we may have goodwill to all people. See, you can't have goodwill towards people if you have a bad heart. You can't wish and mean that you love everybody else if you really don't. When a person trusted Jesus Christ, they no longer are enemies of Christ. And so you do what Christ says, and then you have Christ-like ways, and then you win people to Christ. Listen, you stop trying to please people. Please God, and he'll help you please people. You're going at the wrong end. Because you might please people and make God upset. But if you please God, people will be all right. You don't have to worry about them. That's why he says, seek first. Everybody say, seek first. Seek first. If you want peace, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all his righteousness and all his ways, then I'll give you all this other stuff that you want. But you can't, you can't have peace with people. You can't have peace with people in your house, on your job, in your family, in your neighborhood, in this world, unless you don't put me first. I know, I sit there and get mad. I want to throw stuff at the TV sometimes. Some of the stuff that come on the news, Sylvia, I'm sitting there going like, no, they didn't. No, he didn't. No, she didn't. And I'm sitting going, whoa, 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 Russ, 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 pull it, rain it in, Russ, uh, rain it in. Paul, it's like fishing. I'll talk to you about that later. But it's like fishing, rain it in, and let God be first, and then he'll fix everybody on TV. He'll take care of all the issues that you see. Listen, y'all, we're restless, uptight, worried, anxious. Why? Because we like peace. Why? Because we don't trust God. Why? Because we think about God like we think about people. People will let you down. God will never let you down. We like peace. We fail to commit all of our problems to the Lord. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this. Do not be anxious about anything. Stop worrying. Stop tripping. I got, I'll fix this. You want me to work on him, work on her? Let me work on you first. But in every situation, now that was my commentary. That's not what the text says. The, the text says, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. Oh, is it that? Yes, it's that simple. It's simple, but it ain't easy. The process is simple. Give it to God. God, fix her. Fix him. And God says, okay, that's what you do. That's what you ask me for. Now step back and let me do it. Don't pray and ask God to give you peace and fix her or fix him. And then you step in and say, now this is what I think you need to do. Now see, you just got in the way again. You just messed it up with your attitude, rolling your neck, smacking your lips. I can't fix it when you go back into the situation and make it worse than it was before. To have the true spirit of Christmas, you got to have peace. So you got to focus, focus on the Lord, the true spirit. Fourthly, uh, uh, fourthly and lastly, the true spirit of Christmas, if you keep your notes, the true spirit of Christmas is the spirit of goodwill towards all men. Goodwill towards all men. Listen. If we have the spirit of faith, if we have the spirit of joy, if we have the spirit of peace, then you can have Christian joy. You can have goodwill towards all men. You can't be nice toward people and let people be nice towards you if you have no faith, no joy, and no peace. It just won't work. It just won't work. There won't be goodwill towards all men. It'll be goodwill towards some men some women, some people, but not everybody, because you don't like everybody. You and I pick and choose who we give Christmas to. Let's be honest. There are certain people you can sit there and go like, did you get a gift for someone? Like, mm. well, what is that supposed to mean? I don't like her. I don't like him. They made me mad. Remember that time I said that? And you find all kind of reasons. 
They didn't like my peach collar. They didn't like the clothes I wore. They didn't compliment me. They didn't mention my name in church. They didn't do da 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 And after a while, your list then went from 12 to 2. Why did you give gifts? Because we are sometimes, we are, we are iffy, we are funky. So he says, goodwill towards all men. And the only way to do that is you got to have those other three, and you got to follow what Christ said to do. And so since we were unable to do it, Christ had to come and fix it for us. That's why we know that we can't save ourselves. We can't even get our day right. We can't even fix Monday. And we still got six more days. So God had to come to give goodwill to all men and show us what that looked like. Yes, we do good deeds. Yes, to those in need. We must have goodwill towards people. And stop fighting and stop being angry. Goodwill towards others. And here's the big one, forgiving others. Everybody say forgiving, forgiving. others. And say this to yourself. Say self. That starts today. There's somebody in your life who you need to forgive. There's somebody in your life who you need to say, you know what, I may have misunderstood her. I may have misunderstood the situation. Goodwill towards me starts with forgiving others and not holding grudges. We got somebody running for president right now, and he says, I'm holding grudges. And if I'm president, y'all gonna know I'm holding grudges. See, how can you say he's got the spirit of Christ? As he's telling you, I'm holding grudges and I'm coming to get all my enemies. That ain't Christ-like. I don't know what it is, but it ain't Christ-like. I can't you lift up in church when he ain't acting Christ-like. He don't look like Jesus. You know them by their fruit. Mm, not so much. Not that one. Not by their fruit. Uh, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, all rage, all anger, all brawling, all slander, along with every form of malice, and be kind and compassionate to one another. And here it is forgiving one another. Ah! If people are not living that way, we're not following Christ. We'll never enjoy the full Christmas. It's not found in making Christmas movies. It's not found in our Black Friday deals. Not merely being kind and trying to rekindle a lost relationship around the holiday time, trying to feel all mushy and gushy. Well, I've been mad at you for 11 months and 29 days. But on this one day, I love you, and I think maybe we need to get back together and talk and just kind of get cozy. And then on the 26th, I can't stand you no more. What? No, see, that's what it ain't. And it's not found in chemicals or drugs. What is it? The, the spirit of Christmas is the spirit of faith. The true spirit of Christmas is the spirit of joy. The true spirit of Christmas is the spirit of peace. The true spirit of, of Christmas is the spirit of goodwill. Not all of them are in, in our lives as they should be. But when they are, it results in worship. If you have the joy of God, the faith of God, the peace of God, the goodwill of God, you start worshiping, and you worship differently. You worship with, and people look at you like, you like, you like you're funny because they sit there going like, she should be mad. He should be upset. But you're not. We you say, you know what? I ain't got time for that. Time is too short. Listen, I have, whatever age you are, if you're 30, you have 30 less years than you used to have to glorify God. If you're 60, you have 60 less years than you used to have to glorify and worship God. I'm too old to care about too many, what, what too many people say about Pastor Houston. I really don't care because I'm getting ready to go see Jesus soon. And so I'll be up there glorifying God, and you down here still smacking your lips and being mad. Going, ah, I don't have no joy. I don't have no Christmas. I didn't get no candy. I didn't get no turkey. I didn't get no cranberry sauce. But you better be glad that you got joy, you got peace, you got long-suffering, you got friends, you got family, you got loved ones. Amen. It is when the soul and the spirit are so overwhelmed that we realize that the sovereign God of the universe came for us. The sovereign God of the universe died for us. The sovereign God of the universe sent Christmas for us, rose for us, ascended for us, is sitting right now at the right hand side of the Father for us, interceding for us right now. Because he says, Y'all getting ready to make some dumb decisions. And God is down there. He's telling the Holy Father, He's leaning over and saying, She's getting ready to ask us something. Don't make no sense. Don't even listen to it. This is what she really meant. For us. And then lastly, He's coming back for us. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Somebody ought to be glad. And that's why we sing, Oh, come all ye faithful. We sing, Oh, come all ye faithful, because God is faithful. And he's 
shows us how to be faithful followers of his. And ah, the true Christmas spirit, the true Christmas spirit. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for an explanation of the true Christmas spirit. Help us to get that into our spirit that we may live it and breathe it every day. Every day is tough because every day uh, we get caught up in the flesh. Every day we try to do things our own way. Every day uh, we miss the mark because we, we move on what the world says. We move on what's popular and what's famous and what people are saying and doing. We like cliches. We like things that make us feel good, but we need to move ourselves out of the way and let you order our steps. Now, be with us on this Christmas season, oh God. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this timing. And help us to make some serious decisions today for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise, y'all. Give God praise. Listen, uh, so we got counselors in the sanctuary moving to the side. I say that because there are people streaming us on Facebook Live. And, and it's good to see all of you there. And for those who are streaming us on our other platforms, and we found out that we got some people now in Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, in addition to the other places that we've been worshiping at. So welcome, John, and, and everybody out in Nova Scotia. And listen, let me ask you to make some moves right now. If you haven't ever made these moves, make a move to accept Jesus as your Savior this holiday season. How do you do that? Well, pray with me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know I'm a sinner. Please come into my life just as I am. Clean me up. Help me to believe and help me to follow you the rest of my life. And I give myself to you. And then, Lord, help me to get baptized and get involved in a ministry at a local assembly wherever I may live. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.